<laughs> you want a picture? Mm. Really? Mm. I love you. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gonna unload the ute. Get some new blades on the Honda. <laughs> okay. Hope you guys can see that. Let's see. 14 millimeter. That's what you're after. So that's center nut. Not actually holding the blades at all. Also take note of how you took it off, just in case you forget, but once you get looking at it, it's fairly easy to see which uh, way it wants to go back on. You can see under here, it's been well overdue. For a good clean. Not too bad, though. So you would have seen the new blades in that earlier setup. Pretty much, you just know. If it there, it just doesn't look right, doesn't feel right. It'll just fall into place nice and easy. Almost locked itself in there. You've got the top blade, blade underneath. A little swing blade at the back, just chopping up. Flicking around all that grass, helping to chop it up better. Usually I'd take the stickers off, but it's not the end of the world either. We'll make mention you can, if you need to, sharpen the blades, but um, that's one thing about my old blades, a lot of people don't realise you don't have to have it razor sharp um, to cut grass, especially with a rotary, rotary mower. But if you wanted to give it a quick file or hit with a grinder you can do that but um, at this stage these are fairly fairly good already from brand new it would be only if they had a few imperfections or nicks from the factory that you would want to go ahead and sharpen it go till it's tight. You'll know if you're going too much. Simple as that. Sharpen these babies up. Ready to go for next time. But as you can see, very, uh, very dirty. Let's see if I've got that on the camera properly. Very dirty. And you can see, hopefully you can see, just all the little imperfections that you'll get. Pick up as many sticks as you possibly can, but you can't get them all, unfortunately. There's rocks in amongst grass sometimes. But all in all, not, not too bad still. Um, this one here's been worn a fair bit. If you can see that. But yeah, you want nice sharp blades. So I've got a treatment I want to do this afternoon of weed and feed, which is one thing I'll make mention now. If you read the back of it, see if I can see it here for you. Yeah, so right here. 
do not mow or fertilize for seven days before or after application. Right, so right, right there, if you can see it. Okay, now I mow every four days, so you do the math, you can clearly see I am um, breaking that rule well and truly. Now I'm guessing it's there, obviously for a reason, but at the same time I've had many lawn types and done this process. It doesn't harm them. It, um, in my opinion, liquid fertilisers uh, get into the leaf better once it's been cut. So you'll find this will be the same. What it can do, certain grass types, especially like cooch and something not quite as hardy as buffalo or kaiku, you will notice a bit of yellowing um, before it comes back and bounces back. Now the reason I'm using the weed and feed variety is I don't need a massive push of nitrogen or fertilization uh, for the lawn it's just to green it up a little bit um, and to combat once these uh, the yellowing off happens to your weeds just helps give that grass a little bit of kick it needs to just spring back and come back even stronger and I just find as soon as you cut it opens up them leaf blades gets into it a lot quicker another reason I'm using the Honda today over the Toro because I want to just um, I'm going to be mowing at four inches out the front, whereas with the Toro it's at four and a quarter. <coughs> so I'll be cutting down a little bit deeper than I normally would. And three and a half out the back versus three and three quarters. So just little things about getting into every grass blade, give it a bit more of a need to finish, but also to make sure that this weed and feed penetrates every single little grass blade there. So this four litre container uh, says it treats 260 square metres. It's about right for the amount of lawn I actually have, um, but even still, you can make it stretch a little bit further than that, um, especially if you're only concentrating on areas where there are the weeds. Predominantly, you want to give a light spray over the whole lawn, obviously, but predominantly you want to hit them weeds. So, all right, I'll leave it there. I've got enough talking in a second about a lot of things. <laughs> Do you want this hair? Yeah, I'm not going to get Dad, the cake's wanting to get a picture. Alright, we'll settle down here. Let's hit them off. Let's hit them off.
All right, so that's exactly what you want to do when you're mulching. I'll just zoom in up here, I'll show you why I'm doing this weed and feed treatment mainly. Now, a lot of the reason here is due to the shade in winter time. The shade actually, if you can see, it'll come way out to here in winter, never gets any sun, so up here is always a bit of a struggle, but yeah, that's the main reason. I'm spraying the weed and feed just to um, help some of this cooch and kikuyu creep its way further along. And then we've got a bit of paspalum coming up here, which I'll be getting rid of. And um, yeah, same deal around here. This pine tree will eventually be going, so not too shabby. We'll head out the backyard in a minute. So you'll see down the line here. Right, I've shown you this before. There's a reason why I don't bother with an edger. Right, now up there a lot of whatever you do see hanging over, I'll just show you it quickly. It's because it's so thick. So, see here. All that's just where the mower sits and the wheel hits. But otherwise, pretty much as square as you're going to get for a snipper job, which is all you need to do. As long as you're on top of it early enough. Alright, we'll head out the back. Alrighty, spin this around, simple as that guys, get down, have a look, just taking the top off, which when you're applying product is all you want to do, you don't want to be getting down and stressing the plant out too much, just get that top off, apply the product, give it a couple of weeks, you can get it back down to heights that you prefer or keep it going at, at a proper taller height. Alright, I'm just going to uh, stop there. I'm going to bring some uh, gear in here and I'll, I'll show you what we're going to be talking about today. Alrighty, how are we all going today? I've um, got a little bit to talk about as usual. I just wanted to um, show you guys what I first started with uh, when I... Oh, it was probably 10 years ago I actually acquired the gear, but what I used to then kickstart the business and knowing the direction I wanted to go, which was eventually lawn care and yard maintenance, but how I picked up revenue by doing all these other handyman works and um, still do to this day, but uh, just by having an extra little bit of a skill set behind you, a trade, a background, or if you're just good with your hands, um, how easy it can be to quickly grow the business but also to uh, build quality relationships, trust, um, and provide a reliable service uh, and that can last all year round. Uh, that's a major thing. Most people think this is just like a, a nine month of a year type trade that I uh, approved last, or well, my first year, uh, which was last year obviously, but, um, oh sorry, a year and a bit ago, 18 months ago, time's flying. <laughs> um, 
yeah, just how you can get right through winter, um, even if you have to draw on handyman works or, or something else other than yard maintenance or, or lawn care, it can be done. Um, I just want to make this video and to show everyone out there just uh, how quickly it can grow um, and also just the enjoyment factor that you can get out of it. I've got it all written down obviously on my phone what I want to talk about but um, yeah, there's a lot of things to cover. But I'll quickly get onto these mowers and I'll show you then. Um, and now this isn't going to include today um, the ride-on that's coming, the trailer set up and everything else that I'll have with all the racks there for the trimmer racks and all the rest. If you follow a lot of the American-based YouTube channel, um, lawn care personnel, you'll see all their um, equipment and setups and a lot of them now over there, like uh, small to medium size. Um, they still might be a small business, but they've got uh, medium-sized uh, equipment to use and to, um, yeah, what I'm trying to say is they've got larger trailers, uh, whether it's enclosed or not. They might have truck setups, they might have a couple of truck setups instead of just a back of a ute or a back of a station wagon, which a lot of people start off with um, and throw on the gear in the back of that. So I'll start with the, um, the old Honda that I used to have that I bought, it was the very first. Uh, expensive piece of mowing equipment that I ever bought. Uh, it was for my first house. And before that I had a, um, it was a San Lee mulching mower. And it was from Harvey Norman of all stores. <laughs> the thing went really well. It was a sort of a Honda knockoff, similar design for the engine. Uh, just Chinese built. And it, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Sorry, I'm sweating here. It's bloody hot in this shed. I, um, yeah, I, I didn't mind it, mulched all right. It was a, it was a mulching mower. It's uh, very enjoyable, especially for my first home, but it didn't last that long. Um, just certain things on it were cheaply made, height adjustment, snaps, um, which then didn't allow me to mow at the height that I truly wanted to mow at. The spark plug uh, I found at the time, I, I didn't know, trying to pull start it and got angry with it one day. <laughs> I wanna say another word there, but I won't. <laughs> and, yeah, it's a sort of learning curve when you're that young and not knowing exactly what you're doing. Go to the shop, put a spark plug in and it works fine. So, yeah, I'll get into all that. I'll talk about all this other stuff, but um, I'll show you these mowers. Sorry. <laughs> all right, so this is sort of old versus new. So let's just start from the top. HRU196 Easy Start Honda. So Buffalo Classic. This is a commercial. 19 inch grade um, mower and it hasn't hasn't missed a beat ever since I, I think I, like I said I've spoken about previous videos three oil, oil changes is all I've ever done in the whole life of this bloody mower um, not ideal to do that definitely don't do that now with my new equipment um, I'm changing that every year servicing uh, doing the blades everything else properly but when I was a homeowner didn't really bother things still start and put fuel in and away you go um, I sharpen my blades every now and again, and that was about it. Now, the bench shaft whipper snipper, very powerful. Little FS45. Uh, still haven't really had a drama with that, um, besides obviously air filters and just general wear and tear. A little two mil trimmer cord that goes in it, and the old school bump feed hoods. Just um, yeah, feels like a toy now when you pick it up, and you can see just in the uh, the differences. The way they look to the newer ones, there's a uh, big difference in uh, productivity as well. Now, still a great little blower, this one. It's just a homeowner $250 um, still BG56. I think the other one's uh, 86 if I'm right, something like that. I'm not sure. I don't really follow still that much anymore. So, when I first started, I'm sort of, you know, you do is what you. Uh, your dad did, your dad did before him, or you do is what you, at, at the time with my uh, employment, uh, the big boss of the company always had steel equipment and John Deere and things like that, so it was just, uh, uh, he obviously knows quality and uh, something reliable. And saying that, these things always used to bugger out because they aren't a commercial machine and they're getting used on acreages. Um, and yeah, bench shaft for an acreage, very, very slow. I remember when I was doing it. <laughs> the amount I get done now to what I was doing then, it, it's crazy. But anyway, there's a bag there that I, when I really first started, every now and again would use before I um, got right into the mulching side of things. 
um, which is very simple. This is just a mulching plug up underneath. Uh, it'll be full of grass clippings, I'm sure. My brother's had this gear using it, and he, um, he loved it just as much. Still said it's going bloody strong, so I'll, get, I'll just fire them up quickly. Just to show you. So they're all around 10 years old. Um, and he said the whip snip hasn't been started in a while. How's that? Alright, I'm tilting the screen here, realising it's not tilting the camera. <laughs> Alright, we'll fire this up and then I'll quickly get talking because plenty to talk about as always. Cut the primes, make sure the switch is on. It's one thing I, um, yeah, some of the units these days don't have the switch, so you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, we'll give it a couple pulls and see what happens here. more primes. Sometimes it helps just to give it a little squeeze of the trigger, not too much, you don't want to flood it. I do remember this one, sometimes you had to get right down, flex on it and give it a good pull. I'll give it a go. It's gonna go. Oh, I need to open the jar. Bring it here. You can get on camera. Show my muscles off. <laughs> it's hard when I'm sweaty. Thank you. See ya. These things never seem to die. I thought we were going to die about 12 months ago, this blower. Always been a weapon, that one. Very good value for money. Not quite as comfortable as a commercial grade type equipment, which you would have seen in the uh, mowing footage. Um, but yeah, still, still going. It holds still. Last but not least, the Honda. the blade brake function as well. So at the moment the blades aren't spinning, you've got to engage the blades up top, it's not self-propelled, which I wish it was when I first started. This can go up with the collection that uh, I've got up here, I'll show you quickly. <laughs> uh, the top there. Brand new bags for the Toro and the uh, HRX. That's the Time Master's big bag and the HRX fits inside it. Never gets used. Um, this one I did use once upon a time. Not sure if my brother's used it recently, but... <sighs> Gonna sneeze now, sorry. Yeah, but it'll never get used again either. <laughs> Alrighty, on to the video. Just grab the trusty old phone, get onto it. <laughs> Let's set this up somewhere where you can see me properly without just looking at uh, my chest there. 
one second. Alrighty, so you'll see in the background there, the, uh, the Honda still F S45 BG56. They were what I started with when I first started the business. I was lifting that mower uh, up onto the back of the ute every single day. Um, yeah, day in, day out, maybe eight lawns was the most I could get done in a day back then, at the most. Uh, that was like a 10 hour day. It just, yeah, the cutting width of it isn't nowhere near big enough. You need at least a minimum of a 21 inch mower. Um, a lot of people know this, if you're gonna be doing commercial um, works anyway. Let's move back a bit here so you can see me. Um, yeah, so that was the only real downside to it. Um, obviously the weight too was a major thing, not being self-propelled. Uh, it was very, extremely hard to push, especially in wet, tall grass. Um, hills, hills were a nightmare. And yeah, I just, it wasn't long before I realized if I'm gonna do this, I need to start upgrading my equipment, getting the right equipment for the job. Um, so then the next step I went was the, uh, the Time Master there, the 30 inch deck, um, followed by the HRX, then followed by the Husqvarna at the back there, just so I've got a good range now. Um, I'll never have a drama if I need to get one serviced, I've always got a mower. It just means one day might be a little bit harder than others, that's all. Um, the ride-on will be here shortly, I'm hoping, within the next month, um, all going well. But that's another video altogether. I'll keep talking here just about the reliability of that, um, that Honda. Speaks, everyone knows about Honda mowers, um, you can't go wrong with them. It's just for me, it made sense to get a 30 inch cutting deck fit more lawns in a day, get more product, uh, productivity out of it, um, obviously earn more revenue from that day because you're able to fit in more lawns, it's, it's very simple. Um, so best of both worlds will be once I get this ride on, I'll be using it on the frontages of blocks. Um, typically, if I can't get around the whole uh, house block, and then the Time Master throughout the backyard, if that's ever even get a service, and HRX will be my next pick, purely for the power, 200cc. Um, it just mulches better, I'm finding. Even though I'd enjoy using the uh, the Husqvarna on a whole better, if it was just premium lush lawn that you're just taking the top off, the Husqvarna over the HRX. But if it's a longer lawn, HRX, even over the um, Time Master, to be honest, the HRX will do a better job. So it just seems to be that smaller deck, uh, along with that 200cc engine versus the 223cc on the uh, twin blade Toro, the HRX seems to just get that little bit more of a finer cut. Um, but yeah, another story altogether. Keep uh, on track here again. So that bench shaft I've spoken about and the blower, they're still running to this day, you just saw. Took a little bit to get that snipper going, but it's been a good six months or more before that's been started up, so I gave it to my brother to use, um, but then he's just been using the straight shaft. After using that with me, he, he realized just how much quicker and easier it is. Um, it's hard to go back to that bench shaft once you've got the straight, um, straight shaft snippers. So, all right. Uh, so yeah, I used, like I spoke about, those pieces of equipment, um, lifting that heavy mower, like I spoke about, because it bloody is heavy. Um, so to begin the business, just a backstory. Obviously had um, people that know me. I had like, V8 Utes, nice cars, and things like that from my pre previous jobs, um, and I still do like all that stuff but at the same time it wasn't practical to get the business off the ground. To me, uh, materialistic things, although some are nice and comfortable to have, would not have been practical to have a V8 Ute doing what I'm doing today. Uh, wouldn't have been able to have toolboxes, wouldn't have been able to get half the amount of jobs done that, I, that I've got done since. Um, chucking green waste on the back and just having a tray that you don't have to polish every day or put armour oil inside of to have a show car look. It's, it's not a show pony, it's a work ute. And, and that's the reason why I've gone to, to that type of work ute style. Um, it's just rough, easy to use. Can still look nice, obviously, not rough as guts, but yeah, that, that's one little um, thing I wanted to make mention. So yeah, long story short, I knew I wanted to start the lawn maintenance, um, lawn care and yard maintenance, but to get there I need to do these handyman works, which I spoke about. Um, so yeah, for me it was being a plumber, picking up on other trades as well as the plumber, learning uh, when I had houses of my own, um, doing them up, renovating, learning how to paint, learning how to uh, restore decks, uh, carpentry works, hanging doors, door handles, um, 
so many things that you can do once you get going and once you realise that nothing's rocket science. Um, one tradesman I had told me something very important one day and that was don't be afraid to do anything because um, it's already been done and that was a, a revelation to me at the time, I think I was about 19 years old and you think about it, well people have gone to the moon um, doing what we're doing definitely is nothing like that uh, nowhere near comparison brain power that's required you just need to learn that skill perfect that skill, get efficient at it more productive, enjoy what you're doing um, and just take pride in your work uh, it's very, very that simple um, yeah I just uh, once, I, once I heard that that was the biggest turning point for me not having to go home and stress about it and, uh, and worry did I do it right it's, it's been done before this is the method of how to do it roll with it you can always adapt your own little methods to it and make it, make it your own but um, yeah that's the biggest thing don't be scared to try something because it's already been done before uh, Alright, so yeah, I used the skills that I had to build the brand up, build the business name up, um, which helped. I had a lot of people in the local area when we first moved up that were very loving and caring to our family and helped us out in, in more ways than one. Uh, I cannot thank them enough enough for what they've done there and still do to this day. Um, and as far as that goes, a lot of people were pushing uh, in the local community, knowing a lot of people who had connections. Um, I was obviously very new to the area and they spread the word for me saying there's a young uh, keen worker wanting to have a go, start his own business so I was sick of dealing with tradies that don't take care of um, the local people around here uh, and that's still to this day a, um, a concern but it's going to happen everywhere um, that's just the industry uh, you're going to get your, your bad eggs and you're going to get people that want to rip people off but we're getting into talking about how I go about charging how I only charge into hour blocks not just up to the hour and things like that it's it's more to it than that because the way I look at it is when I'm doing lawns and I could earn 600 plus a day on my own that's telling me I need to make close to that figure every single day right so if I've got one job where it's going to take me and I quote for whatever price I quote for that I get that done in just over an hour or I get that done in two hours instead of three um, as long as I'm over into that next bracket that's when that new charge comes around and it's already into that next hour it's it's not like I finished right on two hours and and then that's it so it's something I'm going to talk about in future videos and how to charge for and what to do and how at the time when I first started you would you would definitely uh, ask yourself oh like I don't want to be ripping people off and it definitely isn't um, because the way you've got to look at it is you're going from one job to another that next job you're going to might be half an hour down the road by the time you get around there you've got to cover costs somewhere along the line and that's just a part of parcel of having a business, but at the same time, you've got to factor that into quotes. So by factoring in a price to a quote that you've already done and then you moved on, it doesn't matter what you did um, time-wise as such, as long as that job was done uh, to the amount that would have been required or to the standard that's required, etc. always to the standard, but I'll get into it further and in deeper uh, context, but that's the biggest thing. Um, to just get onto another job, and to cover yourself before you even get there. Um, it's, it's very very simple and everyone can have their own business plans. Uh, everyone can think what they like, but uh, people that know, know me and the hundreds of clients that I have, hundreds of regular people that keep coming back, know they're getting the quality service, I'm gonna get there on time, the job's gonna be done right, and every single time they ask for something, it's done, plus more. Um, and as much as I can, I get there as soon as I can, but being booked out months in advance now, the next chance I'll have is uh, late July before I can take on any larger works, which will be painting jobs, which is sort of already half lined up with some clients just down the road here. Um, yeah, I've got, a, again, so much to talk about with the uh, how to run it and what to do and how you become so efficient at it that you can be booked out months in advance, even with a worker or two, um, it's possible because now I'm finding I need another worker or two to keep up with the demand. It's constantly um, evolving and changing, and I've spoken about that before, but everything now, it's just stepping up to a level where I want to be, which is pretty much where I am now, but now I just need to hire to then keep the uh, business growing, where I can earn a little bit more profit, 
but it's not all about that for me now because I'm at a level now where if I'm on my own and stay on my own, we're well and truly comfortable and, and happy at the rate of pay um, and everything else going forward. Because honestly, never in my wildest dreams would I have thought uh, 150,000 a year is possible and I'll stand here now saying that's exactly what we're going to achieve, if not more, and that's um, that would be double that uh, if I had another worker full time, uh, another two workers full time, then you just go up again. It's it's 300, then it's 450, then it's and that's how businesses grow. So as long as you're able to account and justify the charge uh, for the amount of work that's getting done, then that's how you grow your business. Um, another topic altogether. All right, sorry, just had a recap. I uh, remembered a lot of what I've written down there. That, that was easy to uh, scroll past. All right, so biggest thing is, a lot of my mowing clients become my handyman clients, and vice versa. I go there for a handyman job. I mentioned, always make mention, always give them the card, always show things on, on Facebook, on social media, on something, just this is what I can do for you. And that's what happens. So I go for a handyman work. All right, can you look after my lawns for me? There's a regular client straight away. All right, can you do hedging? 100%. Can you do pruning of trees? Yes. It's a no-brainer. All that just rolls into one. So hence all the equipment, big backpack blower for uh, acreages and things like that. Just speeds up productivity once again. Um, and yeah, that's where the ride is going to come into play and all the rest of it. So don't just sell yourself short. Always look for the upsell. But it's not about so much upselling. It's just providing another service and they don't need to go find someone else. You're already there. You're already there to fill that hole, that, that void that people need and want. And as long as you're uh, capable of doing that work, don't say yes if you can't do it. Don't do a, a crappy job if you're gonna just charge the same that you wanted to for something you're proficient at. If you're not proficient at it, let them know. Say, I can do this for you. And once I do it, once, the next time you do it for a person, you can charge that top dollar again. That's just how I, I run things. Um, and again, I'll get right into all that, and you can do the figures based on what I've told you, uh, yearly salaries and all the rest of it, because, yeah, it's crazy. To me, it was mind-blowing. Uh, as a plumber, I thought uh, six-figure salaries, that was pretty good, like, felt like we made it back then, but then our mortgages were higher, our overheads were higher. Uh, everything else now about up here is lower, and I'm earning more than I ever have before. Um, so that's why I upgrade the equipment, that's why I develop and then growing the business in a way that I'm going to have constant work all year round, right through winter. No stress, no worries, go on holidays when we need to, when we want to. Um, be there for the kids financially, but also actually here. Set the business up in a way that I can be home at a decent time. Not having to work Saturdays and things like that. Because you can push it, and I did when I first started, 100% I did. Um, Six, six months in, I sort of thought this isn't what I moved up for. I don't want to be doing six days. So something had to change. Uh, obviously my pricing did. People stayed on board, some people left. You, you can't please everyone, that's, that's fine. But in order for me, as soon as I started having to claim GST, I needed to start upping my early rate to then account for that um, GST that I now have to put away for. Um, and then you got that obviously every three months that you've got to pay. Um, and yeah, going forward you just got to account for everything as it's growing, um, find a target, find a find a figure that suits your, your lifestyle. If you've got a higher overhead, obviously you're gonna to need to earn more. So you might have to charge more and you can get away with it to an, to an extent. There's only so much you can do in this industry and how far you can push it. Um, I've tested the waters obviously, being as busy as I am um, with hourly figures and upping it to a limit and a cap so then I know where I'm gonna sit for the next 12 months then I know where I'm going to sit for another 12 months and I'll do the same and the same and again because the thing is inflation happens for every single business and every single industry uh, everything goes up, fuel goes up, groceries go up, your electricity bill, water, everything so why not lawn care, why not yard maintenance, why did we have to stay down at the figure that people think oh it's only mowing grass or it's only doing this and that was the stigma that was around it um, that stopped me for a lot of years branching out because uh, your ego definitely does get in the way. Um, everyone at least semi-respects you when you say you're a tradesman, um, but then when you say you're doing this for a living and people sort of roll their eyes or they think, what, 
what do you mean you're doing that? You left that job to do that. And then at the end of the day, if they don't want to listen, you just go home laughing because you, you know what you're capable of bringing home and you know what you're capable of doing. And the fact is, for me, it, it isn't just lawn care. It is the deck restorations, it is the painting, and it is everything else. And for me, my quality is no different to people that are specialised in that trade. So I'm not going to bring my value down just to suit what people think a, a lawn person should be earning. Um, yeah, that's the big thing going forward. Know your value, know your worth. Hello, Gabrielle. Hello. Sorry, folks, I'm just a uh, little bub's woken up and uh, the wife needs to get to the shop soon, so I'll wrap this up very shortly. I've um, just got a couple more points I want to touch on and talk about what I was just saying about capitalising in the business sense, um, knowing your worth. So, charging a little bit more, obviously, than what I was when I first started to account for the GST and like everything I spoke about. But my equipment has improved. So although I'm charging slightly more and that's a little bit of a bonus, where the bonus is, is that 30 inch mower, is this ride on that's coming, that trailer that's coming, and pricing that doesn't have to shift and change because the fact is, it's gonna enable me to give a quality finish to a job. The ride on will cut better than all of these little push mowers. As long as I don't get on that grass when it's too soggy, um, things like that it'll be fine, it'll be immaculate. Um, same deal, when you're doing your turns with a zero turn, you don't want to be tearing up the lawn and all that stuff. I'll get into videos about that. But yeah, just other ways about upgrading your equipment. So I've got um, all this cordless, lighter, battery powered equipment, hedge trimmers, gonna get the uh, chainsaw attachment, all the rest of it. A lot better than using that heavy um, Honda that I've spoken about, the heavy Honda multi-tool. It's a lot better a million times better than using shears and a ladder, which is what I used when I first started, and I was still charging 50 to 55 dollars an hour back then. Um, and obviously, since then, it's gone up. But that's what I'm saying. My equipment's grown. My price has also gone up, so I'm getting the job done quicker. It's more efficient, more pr more productivity for me, but also a cleaner finish, neater finish, quicker finish for my clients so I can get to people without having to say you've got a two week wait because I'm going to have to spend a whole day on a ladder or on a platform using shears to do a hedging job that would typically take me an hour with proper hedging gear but it takes me like four to five hours just to get that same amount of work done with manual labour type tools, it, it doesn't make sense so where people charge more and you can talk about that too, people charge less but they're not using the same equipment they're not using that uh, top of the range um, piece of equipment to get the job done faster, neater, quicker, all the rest of it. Therefore, their price ends up being the same, if not more, than you, and the job isn't as good. It isn't as neat a finish, because with shears, you can't get that same level finish on a hedge. You can't get that shape. You can't get that round shape perfectly unless you take the time to do it, therefore costing the client more money anyway. I don't see the point in that. I need to get on to more people quicker. Um, therefore I charge a, a bit of a premium for all my services knowing that I'm a skilled tradesman coming through doing a skilled tradesman job that typically skilled tradesmen aren't in this industry. That's the biggest um, head start I pretty much had from the beginning when I started this business. Um, I'll move on quickly here, nearly, nearly done. Yep, so like I said there'll be more future videos going forward discussing the pricing and the quoting and how I quote certain jobs. but. Until I get up to 500 or so subscribers is my goal to then start bringing out uh, these videos so then it reaches people that actually need it. I'm not just gonna bring it out for the 20 odd subscribers that I've got at the moment. Um, yeah, I just need people to start subscribing, start liking. Once that gets up there, I'm gonna have equipment giveaways and things like that. As soon as I hit 500 subscribers, say here and now, there'll be to the value of $500 Then my local Husqvarna dealer I will buy a piece of equipment that you need, whether it's, it's, it's up to 500. So if it's a snipper and it's over 500, then obviously you're gonna to have to sort of pay the difference there. <laughs> but I, I just wanna have that 500 subscribers and there's my little um, give back for that. But there, going forward, if, it, if it's 468 or whatever the price, that's it. Um, it's just up to 500 and it's whatever we can get as close to that. Obviously, there are snippers that are under $500 there. Depends what you need it for. Um, 
but from memory I think it's around 550 for that uh, 525 LST that I've got so just a little bit off topic there but what are we going to talk about here all right so the biggest topic uh, the biggest point to take away from today's video is know your worth know your value like I've spoken about before and charge for what you need to to make don't hold back because you think the industry is going to need to be you have to undercut everyone to get into the into the ballpark figure I've never taken a backward step especially with the Malorn care services because I know what I'm providing in the general area and you get there and they go oh the people don't even blow down or they don't even spray my weeds or whatever and I know I include all that for the price therefore that's the price that's your set price every fortnight another thing I've touched on I do every fortnight or monthly because it works in better with my handyman works and with my acreage works because if I was weekly with certain lawns I can do it for a couple but not everyone if I did it for everyone come winter time you end up losing out because by going monthly in winter then and if you're used to weekly you're gonna have to fill three weeks of that month so the way I've got it set up and it goes on to acreage jobs the following week mixed in with some lawn care and then the other week it's just full straight lawn care and then it all just goes again keeps on rolling so touch on one more thing yep plenty of mowing footage coming up uh, next week of I don't know 60 odd lawns or something we're we'll doing them all on my own next week um, and yeah going forward it's just um, ways I've got to look at the business who, who I'm going to employ uh, going forward the extra worker or two things like that how I'm going to work it that'll all be coming up in future videos um, yeah looking forward to speaking your, to you all then I think that's about it thank you very much I'll um, show some footage possibly later of me uh, using the weed and feed there now I usually let it go late evening um, late afternoon to early evening just give it time to dry on the uh, grass blades and in the grass itself before it hits night time because the temperatures we're having you can get fungal issues if you let it be too wet heading into the night time um, so I try and just get it on when the breeze is picking up typically in the afternoons and the sunshine like again you don't want to apply it when it's too breezy um, but a light breeze gentle breeze that's fine hold it lower to the ground hold it nice and level get all that out evenly all the product out evenly and that's about it I'll show you the um, the video at the end and I'll show you next week just the result in the difference of the grass and how it looks so I'll um, yeah I'll, I'll show you this edge here where the uh, army grubs lawn um, the lawn beetles little black beetles that I spoke about that I treated they're all pretty much gone now but yeah, I'll show you the damage they've done and that'll be it nice and bright out here so it's mainly this end <coughs> And it come from the seed, oh well, I keep saying seed pods, the egg pods that I spoke about. And the black beetle obviously getting in amongst it. So I'll show you this corner come um, next week. Get on top of it here, get a shot down low. And you'll see even just by applying this little bit of nitrogen in this weed and feed, just how much it'll bring all this up. We're looking like we're getting rain late next week as well. But I'll probably be mowing before that, so we'll show the video, and then I'll show after. Uh, it'll probably be next Sunday, so exactly a week uh, from today, exactly what that'll look like. But otherwise, throughout everywhere else, not too bad. All held up. A lot of this cooch has grown back through um, where it was typically going to be. I keep Kaikuyu, sorry. It's um, yeah, all that rain. Coochers has come through going great guns along with that uh, passion fruit vine. Gonna need to put a couple more stakes in. Might as well just take over that whole fence there. <laughs> Alright, guys, thanks again. Talk to you all very soon. Sorry for the shaky camera. Everyone's been asking about this pup in the videos. <laughs> this is Baya. She's a good girl. She's a little, a little B word. Let's just say that. But she's all right for a little dog. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Bye.
take these Maui <laughs> gi. He's going to get his slipper. Oh, he's getting all of them. <laughs> That's not your whipper snipper. We don't need a chainsaw to cut grass. Do you see if I've got one here? No. Quick, go get your snipper. Hurry, oh. hurry. Okay. Okay. There. That's the one. Quick. Quick. Show the camera. Up here. Yeah, good job. <laughs>